वेलकम बैक टू वी एल एस आई फॉर ऑल आई एम अपूर्व दीक्षित टूडे इज होस्ट एंड वी आर बैक विद यट अनदर एक्सपर्ट टॉक ऑन वी एल एस आई इंडस्ट्री एंड करियर वी आर ऑनर टू हैव आर गेस्ट मिस्टर शिवराज ठाकरे joining us from bangaluru so before we uh, start with our interview i'll just uh, talk a little bit about your professional career so uh, he's ex senior director of ip engineering at intel corp managing uh, analog and mixed signal ips like hpm and ddr on various process nodes that are integrated on server socs prior to the, this uh, he was a full fledged ip team lead with responsibility such as ip specs roadmap pap, uh, interface tools methodology flows team building and hiring Shivraj started his career as an SRAM circuit designer engineer at Alliance uh, Semiconductors back in 1998. He then moved to US to work as senior physical design engineer at Sun Microsystems. He has got a master's degree in VLSI design and microelectronics from IIT Kanpur. So, uh, so before uh, we again dive into the uh, questions directly, uh, can you do a little introduction about like uh, what you're doing uh, these days? Hi, I'm Shivraj Thakre. I used to work for Intel Corporation as a senior director. managing their analog ip division for the server program i also want to uh, you know express a disclaimer here that uh, all the views that i express here as well as the information i share here uh, is my personal and uh, it is not on the behalf of intel corporation uh, please understand this disclaimer okay so this is the first question basically are going to be related to the semicon that uh, happened in greater noida 2024 uh, so we'll start with the first question yeah Uh, you recently attended the Semicon Greater Noida 2024. Uh, could you share your experience and thoughts on the initiative taken by the government of India to promote semiconductor manufacturing? And are you satisfied with the steps that they have taken? And uh, what do you think is going to be the impact on near near future for India's semiconductor industry? I think the it was uh, pretty exhilarating uh, to see that the government is standing behind the growth of semiconductor manufacturing in India. Uh, government also has. Uh, uh you know year mark uh, 10 billion dollars on uh, semiconductor companies in india mm-hmm. uh government uh, had also been successful to bring uh, most of the ecosystem partners uh, on mm-hmm. the same platform in through semicon mm-hmm. india 2024 uh, right from uh, semiconductor equipment manufacturing uh, to the material to the electronic design automation companies design companies manufacturing companies assembly and test companies as well as uh, uh, the Uh, uh, the rest of the ecosystem partners mm-hmm. i think it was a great show to bring uh, most of the ecosystem partners on the same platform so opinion. it was a successful semicon it was a great success uh, i think uh, it uh, resulted into two uh, major steps so first and foremost it sent a strong signal to the world that mm-hmm. government of india is a damn serious about yeah. uh, you know becoming a major player in semiconductor mm-hmm. uh, in india the second thing that is resulted uh, out of this semicon india is uh, major announcements uh, by up government uh, by uh, the other companies on their development and mm-hmm. expansion plan in india so relating to that uh, there is you said that there are efforts by the state governments specifically up government to develop a semiconductor park right yeah. so what do you think about it like how do these semiconductor parks actually contribute towards achieving that kind of goal which the government of india is it's aspiring for and uh, in your view what is the estimated timeline also for india to achieve such a you know global impact or to hold such a position globally uh i think the question is twofold one is uh, announcement by up government mm. and a second is uh, second question is about uh, uh, you know the timeline right yes. uh, i think uh, the step taken by up government is uh, is uh, very good uh, because uh, currently the semiconductor companies are centered around bangalore and hyderabad mm. uh, and the logistic of these cities is not adequate for further expansion so it is a great idea to you know diversify the growth all over india and uh, the compared to the workforce coming from north india uh, in terms of semiconductor design mm. uh, it's a great step in my opinion right yeah uh, one more thing i would like to add matlab uh, from my experience i have seen that uh, if you are like the semiconductor park is closer to your area you are more likely to get uh, placement also <laughs> like i've seen in bangalore colleges they have successful rate of getting placement to really good companies because they are nearby right and they are also from good colleges so it's easier for them uh for kanpur i would say like there's no semiconductor park as such in up so that would also increase the probability of getting a good placement percentage do you agree i think uh, 
the placement of uh, the engineers, uh, I mean, companies do not discriminate between whether the person is from local or mm. person is from other state, right? However, uh, the, the students uh, would like to work in a company closer to their home. Even senior professional would like to go back to their home state mm. uh, because of the proximity to their uh, native. So coming to our next question, so um, I read your article on LinkedIn, which was uh, very efficiently written. It actually summarized the whole semicon for me. And uh, you had mentioned that the primary focus of the semicon was definitely semiconductor manufacturing and promoting it in India. However, you also recognize significant potential in a research design assembly. Could you please elaborate for our audience, like uh, how India has uh, uh, grown in terms of these domains, assembly, design, and uh, uh, what all we can achieve more and do they also uh, are that like are they all also that much important as the manufacturing should we focus on them as well okay i think uh, rightfully so since uh, india doesn't have a, a great success so far in manufacturing the emphasis of semicon 2024 was on manufacturing uh, there is no doubt that the the topic of emphasis was rightfully susan However, in my opinion, uh, there is a huge potential for India to grow in a pre-silicon research and development. Mm. Uh, I think uh, currently we have, in India, uh, most of the multinational companies have set up their development center in India. Mm. We have achieved uh, major uh, and more complex, uh, you know, server resources and client resources are being taped out from India. Uh, the most complex IPs are being uh, developed in India. Uh, similarly, I think the 25% uh, of iPhone are being assembled in India. Yeah, right. I think this is a great uh, success so far. But in my opinion, uh, the potential of India lies in the fact that we have you know, millions of engineers coming out of this institution. They need a job. Uh, they have proven their talent and more needs to be proven on that. In my opinion, uh, the potential of uh, India in terms of recent research and development has not been fully exploited by us. Right. So uh, that also, uh, you know, uh, makes me think about the the research uh, budget that our government of India actually allocates. That is quite less as compared to China, US. What do you think about that? It should be increased. Uh, I think uh, uh, the uh, out of ten billion dollar that uh, government of India has uh, earmarked, right? The mm. uh, research and development centers do not take a lot of money, right? How much does one SOC com uh, company needs? Maybe $100 million and 150 million dollar. Uh, how much uh, one uh, complex analog IP company needs that? Maybe $50 million, $70 million. So the amount of money required for R&D facility is much lesser compared to the manufacturing. Uh, I think the, there is, uh, there is a, a budget uh, you know, available. There are a lot, lot of VCs available uh, to put in money into the R&D. I think more initiative needs to be taken in that uh, area by Indian companies, right? So far, we have made most of the multinational companies successful by developing their products in India. It is time for Indian companies to design Indian products uh, uh, and make promoting made in India. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Next question, sir. So you have stated that India has achieved notable success in pre-silicon research and development compared to manufacturing. Could you please provide some specific examples of this success that might not be widely known to our audience? Specific mm -hmm. examples. Uh, as I said in my last answer, uh, uh, the many SOC companies, product companies, have designed their next generation SOCs mm. from India on latest uh, process node. Uh, most of the most complex analog IPs such as PCI Gen 7 or Ethernet uh, have been developed in India. Uh, I think uh, from product development perspective, from associate development perspective, India has achieved the success. I will not be able to name a product, but the, the general uh, success is pretty big. Right? Right, right, right. Okay. So, so um, how do you view the importance of government industry collab collaborations in the semiconductor space, uh, particularly in the context of research and innovation? And uh, are there specific models of collaboration that have proven successful in other countries, specifically uh, keeping in mind USA because you have personal experience with that? So how do government of India actually contribute into research for some projects that you may know of? Okay. I think uh, there had been a success in the past, like uh, the American government have uh, had compelled uh, 
the in the industries to collaborate and share the learning from innovation in the past uh, but it was done in the backdrop of uh, i think their fight against japanese companies in the mm -hmm. past uh, i don't think we can redo the same thing but at the same time we can make the academic institutions collaborate uh, instead of companies uh, together for uh, next generation innovation right uh, i don't think it is just government and industry it should be government industry and academic institutions should work hand in hand for mm. uh, solving complex technical problem to actually there are company. many projects which uh, iits are working on iit kanpur iit bombay uh, like related to one i can think of is the uh, environmental impact or the cloud seeding <coughs> recently happened in new delhi which was done by iit mm -hmm. kanpur if i remember i know i'm not uh, sure about that so yeah there are some projects which i also am aware of but uh, the government of india could also bring in a lot of uh, you know budget Uh -huh. uh, for such projects so that uh, they could be uh, explored more uh, intuitively and uh, you know they if they have that kind of money it could be worked upon for future also uh -huh. okay okay uh so coming to some personal questions now uh so we wanted to know that you did your masters from iit kanpur and what exactly motivated to, towards uh, gate examination attempt oh that was back in 1994 and uh, the the information technology wave was not into action that time uh, and uh, the the jobs available were very few mm. so naturally uh, you know either do mba in a premier institution or do masters in engineering from a good institution was the only way to get a job into in the industry mm -hmm. and that's why the first reason is uh, you know it was a matter of compulsion for me second thing is in my institution there was a huge culture of uh, you know uh, writing a get examination and excel in it so mm. i wrote in that way and uh, that's how i could uh, so <laughs> there were basically i guess three options left for people uh, either do a gate uh, stick with the you know your uh, your specialization or uh, do mba or go for is examination oh, that is uh, mostly in north india right people <laughs> yeah. people write is examination so uh, yeah three options available to everyone <laughs> so you opted for gate examination Correct. because you had interest Correct. in this field and you i mean in my opinion you know if you are electronics engineer and if you are true electronics engineer and if you do not fall in love <laughs> with electronics and a whole that means uh, you are unbecoming like electronics engineer right it right. was very so, natural for us to uh, do, hmm. do masters so uh, so when you did your gate examination obviously you got good <laughs> marks that's why you uh, opted for iit kanpur but uh, what made you choose microelectronics vlsi as a specialization because there are many options right um, different kind of specialization available for people of electronics engineering to do masters what exactly was the reason that you took microelectronics well uh, you know naturally uh, most of the courses associated associated uh, are associated with uh, electronics uh, mm. in your in my bachelor degree right uh, you know the the idea of using transistors and do the calculations on silicon uh, to you know design different types of circuits and uh, its silicon success uh, the ability to do the calculation in a very fast way on silicon uh, is definitely attractive proposition for me to mm. choose the microelectronics right? quite intriguing yeah yeah <laughs> and the best money making was that <laughs> one of the reasons of course it was a pretty lucrative uh, you know field uh, to enter in so at that point of time also it was the most uh, difficult to get into uh, the higher rankers got microelectronics or was it uh, different at that point of time i think uh, computer science was number one that time as well in uh, electronics in was, electronics especially in electronics uh, microelectronics was uh, most uh, you know um, it is go, true go for so yeah. these days also okay sir uh so uh, going along with that question uh, what was your interest uh, basically lied uh, was your interest more into digital domain or analog um i think uh, the the fact that uh, the analog was more electronics knowledge centric physics knowledge centric mm -hmm. uh, it was more interesting uh, at the same time Uh, ability to uh, design uh, you know the thousand gate circuit or thousand gate uh, you know module mm. uh, in a very short uh, time is a specialty of digital circuits 
so both of these circuits analog circuits as well as digital circuit ha- had their own attractions mm. uh, i fall for analog circuit because of uh, ability to you know utilize the physics uh, knowledge and electrical engineering knowledge you get to know your uh, interest where your interest lies by doing different kind of projects so we did uh, digital and analog projects and we knew <laughs> which domain we wanted to get into yeah, right yeah. So yeah you did your master's degree from IIT Kanpur and uh, related to that what was your experience to uh, in your college days like with your colleagues with your the relationship with your uh, professors something that you remember of that you can share uh-huh. yeah um, i think major part of our teaching staff at IIT Kanpur they had their graduation done you know maybe 20 years before and most of them had done graduation in uh, you know uh, transistor modeling transistor mm-hmm. manufacturing and simulation uh, as opposed to the newer teaching staff who you know who did you know the phd in uh, design automation and the soc design and logic design so uh, what was uh, you know uh, a scenario of a dilemma for us to go for you know, the device modeling kind of uh, specialization in the project or go for the soc design soc design was more lucrative because there were more jobs available uh, the design or uh, the device modeling was uh, more challenging in terms of engineering and uh, there was a tussle among professors to to sell their areas of interest for mm-hmm. project and attract students and the comments by you know different professor was quite funny right <laughs> yeah the <laughs> The so uh, that time also you guys used to uh, contact professors or they they presented their kind of research and then you guys chose which professor uh, to get in contact with and ask for to joining their team how it was did it happen both way right the professor will propose that they want to do research in this area are you interested and the students will go to professor i want to tell uh, another funny incidents where uh, you know it was my first week at iit kanpur hostel meeting and there was a decision about how much should be the membership fees for the cultural committee of the hostel and the previous membership was what 25 rupees or something okay and this year membership uh, in order to decide how much should be the membership this year they said they form a committee uh, of phd student one from mathematics one from uh, humanity another from the computer science and the report out after two weeks and uh, without any decision without any recommendation Uh, because they try to make it more complex by using the inflation last year inflation this year the scholarship <laughs> coming this year and the tuition fees this year and the decision was not made that time i realized that if you have too many technical uh, you know experts uh, to make a simple decision, decision they make detailed. it utterly complex to make <laughs> yeah. decision <laughs> right sir. so which was your hostel hall 5 hall 5 yeah. okay okay sir okay because mine was hall 4 and uh, it was basically uh, uh, where my relatives also stayed he he also graduated from iit kanpur masters okay. i think he might be your batchmate so he was in hall 4 at okay. that point of time yeah so okay so next question anything that you remember with your friends uh, any incident oh um you know uh, going to moti jhil in kanpur as well as going to uh, ganga maya uh, uh, was Benanj. quite a trip and it was a very uh, inexpensive city yeah you know from uh, the railway station of kanpur to the iit kanpur the distance was what 30 35 kilometers mm. and we used to go in 7 rupees uh, that time right yeah. we used to throw a party to our friends after getting job and in, it was like you know 30 rupees per person uh, full uh, full <laughs> meal in the uh, restaurant's host site right? <laughs> yeah. very inexpensive indeed okay so there were many circles of baraj then <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay so uh, that time also uh, you had bicycles we used to have bicycles bicycles time, yeah. itself yeah generally the the you know outgoing student will uh, donate the bicycle to the you know incoming students right and it still happens eh? okay. <laughs> much uh, more uh, cheaper for us <laughs> good yeah. alternative okay so uh, so uh, depending on that uh, your experience and now you have experiences with the fresh graduates also coming out of iits iits engineering colleges and what do you feel like their technical knowledge is like where does it stand or do they need to work on the curriculum also like indian and universities curriculum that should change or what is your aspect on it 
Oh, I mean, I would uh, rephrase your question, if I may. Uh, you know, uh, how can we make uh, the Indian curriculum more competitive for semiconductor exactly. market? Or what are the challenges in front of the institutions to make the students uh, more MNC ready, right? Mm. I think there are three kinds of challenges. One is a structural, like our course is not BTEC uh, VLSI, it is BTEC Electrical Engineering. Mm. So apart from VLSI, VLSI student needs to study, you know, Communication Engineering and other subjects as well. Uh, and I think the percentage of students going for masters is very less. I think on a structural side, the institution needs to do two things. One is they should launch a BTEC VLSI course, mm. uh, which is separate from BTEC Electrical Engineering. And the second thing they should do is to increase the master seat, right? Uh, going forward, the challenges in the in industry are more complex and you need master degree for solving some of the technical mm -hmm. challenges. Uh, the second um, thing is a proximity to the industry, right? As I said before, the industry of semiconductor R&D is mostly centered in Bangalore and Hyderabad, but we have, we have institutions in Orissa, institutions in Bengal, right? Uh, Rajasthan, right. Gujarat. Mm -hmm. I think we need to have diversified uh, industry so that uh, the the institution and, and industry collaboration is more impactful mm -hmm. and more close in my opinion. Yeah, I think the internships should also be offered more often to uh, all that the students so that they have help. some industry experience. Uh, when they get inside, they, they'll know what all, uh, you know, uh, the skills they need to develop in order to get right. a full-time uh, offer also from those the companies. The third important challenge the, the institutions are facing is uh, the teaching staff also because most of the teachers have done PhD in the non vlsi domain. Mm. And when they teach the VLSA subject, I think the effectiveness is not at par with uh, the industry, right? And that's why I think... Uh, either teachers should be sent for the VLSI crash course or there should be more PhD, uh, hmm. you know, students uh, taking teaching job, in my opinion. Right, right, right. Okay, fine. Uh, another question uh, on your uh, personal choices, sir, <laughs> that you opted for a job in United States. What motivated you to do so? And how was the process? Was, was it tedious or it was very difficult to grab a job at that point of time? I will answer a second question first. Uh, uh, the process and the availability of job uh, that time, I think the answer to that question is not much relevant now because the scenario is dramatically changed. Mm. Number of jobs are changed, number of uh, opportunities in India also have changed. Uh, the, the immigration process has become more complex now. I have heard that for one visa position in US, they have at least 10 candidates. So there is a visa lottery system. Uh, so competition is much tougher now compared to you know that time. That time the most of the MNC used to come with a we used to call interview squad uh, mm -hmm. in a team of interviewers uh, from Intel or uh, Sun coming to Bangalore. They will interview students and within two days they will generate offer letter. Uh, within four weeks to six weeks they will have visa. And the scenario was such that people will, will used to have more than one US job or more than one US visa as well. Mm -hmm. Pretty easier. It as was pretty easy. To the, these days. Uh, I think the motivating factor to go to US that time, uh, some of the attractions uh, are fading now, uh, but the attractions were, you know, better career growth, uh, higher salary, and uh, better lifestyle. Mm. So, as compared to these times now, current uh, situation, uh, how do you feel? The same uh, salary scenario is there, or still US is uh, giving much more better opportunities to? Indian students. I can give you one example. Um, my salary in India that time was roughly 3 lakh, 3.5 lakh per annum. And when I went to US, uh, it jumped to what, uh, 35 lakh or something. Mm -hmm. So the salary difference was tenfold for interior engineers, uh, mm -hmm. you know, in India versus USA. That 10x salary difference is no longer valid now, even mm -hmm. for entry level engineers. It is uh, hardly three to four times. Right? So uh, you uh, so uh, uh, did not tell about the way that uh, you applied for a job in U United States. You said that the companies came and there was oh, interview schedule correct, for you guys. So, so it was in IIT Kanpur itself? No, right? No, no. Uh, it was uh, in Bangalore. Bangalore. Okay. They came and then you applied right. for it and it was pretty easy to imply, apply and give the That's interview. Correct. Okay. Yes, okay, sir. All right. Uh, what would you suggest our audience or Indian students who are aspiring to go abroad? Why should they opt for it uh, or should they stay in India or should it be a subjective topic? 
towards their interest i think in my opinion there is no right or right answer i would like people to follow their passion hmm. definitely uh, the working culture in us is uh, very straight forward more much more professional uh, i think there is a lot of things we can learn from uh, us work experience Uh, at the same time uh, if uh, people are going there for salary and other things i think uh, the salaries in indian companies are so not much lesser now mm-hmm. they've considerably increased yeah the, the answer is follow your passion there is no uh, right or right right or wrong answer okay. here what may i do come back to india uh i think uh, uh, my heart beats for india uh, <laughs> the ability to stay in your country and do the same work that you are doing in 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 us maintain the similar lifestyle in india these are the two attractions uh, why i came back to india okay sir okay uh, so next question uh, how would you compare the job opportunities in vlsi industry in india versus those abroad so comparing the job opportunities which are given Mm-hmm. uh you said that the uh, there is no disparity between the incomes of uh, you know what is provided right. by the us or some other abroad nations and india but uh, in terms of number of opportunities which is greater where is it greater in india or abroad let's talk about the the quality of jobs available here versus overseas right mm-hmm. quality of job and the quality of value addition jobs in india is improving every year and it is marching towards uh, uh, at par with overseas jobs right uh, i would like to say that uh, 80% jobs in the vls industry in pre silicon are uh, you know logic design and log design verification post silicon i think there is no uh disparity in those jobs here versus uh, us or abroad right mm-hmm. they are similar so 80% jobs uh, in the in the vls industry are similar here versus uh, abroad uh, there are few jobs uh, which are not available in india and they are available in abroad only because of the proximity issue uh, as well as because of the fact that the headquarters is abroad right Mm. and those jobs are number one the jobs that needs a constant uh, you know collaboration with the technology development mm. those jobs are not available in india the jobs that needs uh, your participation in the international bodies like jedec or uh, pcic those jobs are not in india and there are certain jobs uh, which needs constant uh, you know discussion on the product specifications those jobs are not available mm. in india okay okay Uh, however by and large uh, the quality of jobs in india is same as us and it's improving over it's the improving. years it's improving next question sir so having transitioned from a technical role to a managerial position what challenges did you encounter and what new experiences did you gain in this shift yeah i think uh, there had to be a enormous mindset change when you when i transitioned from individual contributor to the manager first of all uh, you know the manager it is is responsible for the team development and uh, team growth uh, he is not uh, responsible for uh, for growth of one person or for himself um, i think uh, a systematic development of the team and systematic uh, execution of the product development these are the mm. two things that uh, the manager had to uh, learn so i i did that um, the other aspect is the manager needs to think strategic uh unlike individual contributor who will only focus on the current assignment mm. manager has to think about the current project execution as well as uh, the the projects in future so the manager has to deploy 90% people on to the current assignment and 10% people needs to do reiki uh for the future projects right so that kind of strategic uh, you know mindset had to be deployed by manager um uh, and other than that uh, you know the the new skills of team management uh, team growth emotional intelligence mm. and uh, making the world class team these are the skill set i had to use as a manager so sir in your team uh, you have been part of a lot of teams right uh, so uh, you saw the fresh graduates what do you think uh, about your their technical prowess and what do you suggest fresh graduates also like where they should focus on more Uh, it's a great question because uh, often i i see you know first 
fresh graduates are uh, uh, very ambitious, but at the same time, there is nothing wrong in being ambitious, but they are very jittery. Uh, I would like to say that, uh, you know, um, the fresh graduates should focus on learning. Uh, they should focus on more problem solving rather than going behind the salary and the title and the company. Uh, they should learn uh, technical problem solving uh, that will uh, improve their value in the industry mm -hmm. and the salary and the title uh, will follow that, right? That's the first message. The second message is uh, uh, work as a team. I have seen as a student uh, tend to, you know, constrain the information and knowledge to themselves. Uh, they don't share knowledge uh, because the exams are individual examinations. But when they go in a company and work on a project, uh, the exam is uh, about project success. They have to so work as a ability team. to work in a team, share mm -hmm. the knowledge, share the learning, solve technical problems collectively is an important skill set they should learn uh, because uh, the teamwork is more important than individual success. So these are the two prominent messages I wanted to give to the, the Young minds. <laughs> Okay, so uh, coming to very generic questions uh, on the VLSI industry, as we are reaching uh, AI stage now, uh, everything is now being, uh, you know, governed and controlled by automation. So the first question is that, uh, what do you think about the integration of automation into verification and designing? <coughs> and how do you see the f or foresee the impact of such aut automation on the job opportunities for the young minds or the young graduates or fresh graduates in the upcoming years? Currently, if you look into automation and, and its applications into the VLS industry, uh, there are four areas where I can say automation. The first thing is uh, the the verification infrastructure development, uh, where automation helps dramatically. Uh, the second area is uh, writing the verification test and verification suite, mm. uh, even for the corner cases, uh, uh, and um, by using the specifications, this is the second area. Third area is uh, the AI and machine learning based, uh, you know, design and uh, verification process. And the fourth area is about uh, uh, using, you know, automation for debug, right? Yeah. These are the four areas which where automation has been successfully deployed in the industry. On a prime of HASI, it appears that it will uh, eat up jobs and uh, the number of jobs available in the market will be lesser because of the automation and by, because of the penetration of AI and machine learning. Uh, at the same time, I think the fact is uh, not uh, true. In other words, uh, uh, there will not be any impact on the job because mm -hmm. of following reasons. First of all, uh, there are many new sectors coming up in the industry. Uh, for example, we have uh, you know the AI and machine learning. We have the 5G and its components. We have automotive. These new sectors of industry needs more uh, semiconductor products for design. The second thing is, uh, you know, the complexity of the uh, the semiconductor component has been dramatically increased, right? Mm -hmm. We used to have a SOC of uh, 10 billion transistors five years before. It will reach 50 billion transistors five years later. So for solving this kind of complexity, uh, we need more people. Mm. And third important thing is, is even for the AI and machine learning usage into the design and auto, you know, and verification, you need to write uh, AI algorithm, mm. you need to train the algorithm, you need to infer them. So we need uh, manpower for that as well. So in my opinion, there will not be um, any impact because of the application of it, automation and AI ML. So I think there should be a shift in uh, terms of the skills that uh, people need to uh, learn about and gain experience at uh, so that they could contribute into automation That's and increase right. the efficiency of verification That's and designing. Right. Yeah. New skill sets, <laughs> that is what is required for the yeah. new age. Right, so. So uh, with the increasing complexity of semiconductor designs, as you said, so we see the 4C, uh, the importance of electronic design automation tools. What do you think about <laughs> these automation tools? Uh, if you look into the, the market availability right now, you know, the, the, the market available for the EDA tools is roughly $15 billion. It is expected to grow to $30 billion by 2032 in next, uh, you know, seven, eight years. The importance of... Uh, the EDA tools is increasing every year mm. um, because of the complexity increase. Right, we are going into 
uh, the area where uh, our technology has become more complex and that's why there are many new design rules for uh, design for manufacturing and design for reliability uh, that needs uh, you know more complex tools uh, we need a, a capability of tool to be improved uh, or increase uh, be, because our uh, resource complexity is also increasing rapidly uh, that's why the importance of the EDA tools will be much more in future. Right, sir. So, uh, sir, given the global semiconductor shortage that we are seeing, <laughs> how do you believe India's uh, semiconductor industry um, initiatives can help mitigate such challenges in the future? Yeah. And do the, you see any shortcomings in the future? I think let's let's uh, you know uh, see the the shortage currently, or at least two years before. Uh, the car manufacturing is to stop shipment of the forty thousand dollar car because of not having you know ten dollar semiconductor component, right? Mm -hmm. And that was the impact of shortage. Uh, in in our opinion, in my opinion, I think the the Indian industries can play a good role in overcoming shortage. Uh, if you focus on uh, the multiple process nodes including lower process nodes because not every electronic component needs uh, to be designed on latest process. Hmm. And that will be a key uh, to focus on you know, the right process node for right electronic component. Right. So, so there is like a lot of dependency on Taiwan and US yeah. for these chips and that should actually shift to India and India should bear that you know, burden of, you know, so that we can avoid such kind of shortages if in future, you know, it happens. Yeah, yeah. Mm, that is required. And our government of India is actually helping with the initiatives that right. we have. Right. Uh, so, so uh, what strategic uh, steps should be taken to strengthen India's supply chain resilience? That should include the semicon initiatives. What else do you think, <coughs> like, uh, should be done? I think uh, if you look into the current geopolitical scenario, a mm. uh, lot of control technology is being forbidden to be imported into China. Mm. Uh, for example, uh, the the NVIDIA HT100 uh, is, is forbidden to be shipped to China. Uh, there are uh, many technologies, advanced IPs are being stopped, you know, to ship to China, uh, but what Chinese government is doing is they are trying to be independent of that. Mm. They have their own EDA tools. They have their own, uh, you know, suppliers of uh, material and chemical for their fab. They have their own uh, semiconductor uh, manufacturing e equipment. I think India needs to strengthen uh, entire ecosystem, uh, in my opinion, mm. to be independent. So working in all the aspects and all, all the, the aspects of the the ecosystem, right from chemical material mm. uh, to the uh, manufacturing tools to the design to manufacturing assembly. And slowly, slowly, we're reaching there. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, coming to a very different question. So what are the current trends in low power VLSI design, <coughs> and how do you think these trends will influence the development of energy efficient consumer electronics and IoT devices in the coming decade? I think the the importance of designing the low power uh, electronic component uh, is increasing manifold. If you look into the current scenario, 2% of world's uh, uh, electricity is being used by data centers. Mm. Uh, you know, you consume, let's say, 200 units of uh, electricity at home knowingly, but at the same time, because of uh, the fact that you are using data center, you are using the uh, telecom equipment, uh, your actual uh, energy consumption is manifold. So, mm. uh, because of that, uh, the designing the low power equipment is is increasingly important. At the same time, uh, if the power dissipation into the electron, electronic component is more, then the thermal solution and the cooling solution is much more expensive. From that aspect as well, the low power design is important. So, coming to our last question, sir, it is going to be a little different. So, what are the current trends in low power VLSI design, <coughs> and how do you think these trends will influence the development of energy efficient consumer electronics and IoT devices in the coming decade? Yeah, I think uh, the designing a lower power electronic components is uh, 
much more important than before uh, because uh, you know we are consuming the electricity unknowingly uh, because we use data centers we use telecom equipment and other uh, industrial automation units right so uh, at the same time the uh, designing lower power uh, component is more essential because of uh, uh, the cost associated with the cooling and uh, the power uh, so because of that it is uh, important uh, the trends of low power design are not you know constrained to a particular function uh, we have low power initiatives in uh, you know logic design analog design uh, platform software firmware as well as we have low power design techniques in the in the fab as well uh, taking example of the technology, right? Uh, technology uh, is constantly trying to devise uh, or design uh, transistors with lower power mm -hmm. and lower leakage. In uh, free silicon design, we have many lower power uh, features, uh, clock gating, the power gating, and other types of low power features. Uh, similar features are uh, being exercised in, uh, in a firmware as well as the BIOS as well. So relating to that only, uh, since you have worked at Intel, what do you think about Intel new I AI PCs that are being released with an NPU inbuilt? Uh, being, uh, you know, ex-Intel citizen, uh, I, I dream it to be a great success. <laughs> uh, I think uh, uh, I have heard that uh, it is supposed to get co-pilot one tag because of it is hitting the 45 tops as a performance. Uh, also, it has uh, indigenously developed AI accelerator. Overall, it will be a great product in the com in the in the market, in my opinion. And where do you think Intel uh, in general computing will be in five or ten years? Intel computing. Intel and in general computing. I will not answer Intel question. I don't uh, work <laughs> okay. for Intel anymore. Uh, so, uh, so what do you think about the Nvidia's growth and their dominance in GPU? Uh, if you look into NVIDIA, when did they start uh, uh, working on AI? You know, I was in the US in 2016 on business travel, and we happened to work with NVIDIA, you know, fellow on some display specifications. And that time, you know, AI penetration did not happen in the market, but NVIDIA had deployed, you know, several hundreds of engineers to solve AI problems. So the NVIDIA success is not overnight. Mm -hmm. This log. And they have been slogging on it for last, uh, you know, seven, eight years, ten years, and I think uh, time will tell whether other companies will will design equally competitive product as an answer to Nvidia or not. Okay, sure. Okay. So, uh, one question related to your Intel experience: How do you remember, or one particular uh, project that you worked on and achieved great success? Do you want to share with us? Recently, you might have noticed the announcement by Intel about uh, Xeon 6 server using the uh, you know proprietary memory technology of MCR 8800 uh, that is a project which is very close to my heart and uh, since it is public information I would like to you know say that the it's very competitive product with Xeon 6 uh, with the Gaudi 3 as accelerator and uh, MCR 8800 uh, memory transaction, which is the fastest memory transaction in the world as of now. Right? I, I, I wish Intel a great success out of this product. Okay, and thank you so much sir, for joining uh, us. And uh, it was a great pleasure talking to you. Uh, thank you for having me. Thank you.